want to put the land. Driving down the surrounding hills, we see this firsthand. Jewish settlements clearly under construction. The roads reveal another occupational hazard, checkpoints. We want to be free. We want to have our integrity, we have to have our dignity. Every time I go from this checkpoint, I'm stopped. They can't stop you anytime. And I'm used to it, to be stopped. I'm humiliated, but I pretend I'm not humiliated. 45 minutes later, we arrive. Masri, a long-time confidant of Yasser Arafat, is meeting with top Palestinian officials for a briefing on peace talks, which are meant to resume next week. Meeting done, there's just time for a quick pray at Arafat's tomb before we head back to Nablus. Masri's rotunda-inspired home is filled with art and artefacts. A throne belonging to King Farouk's grandfather, an Ottoman-era marriage chest. There's even a 5th century monastery excavated underneath the house. For all these echoes of the past and his wealth made in the Gulf's oil and gas industry, Masri is focused on the future. Independence, he says, must come before any other initiative, including John Kerry's $4 billion plan to boost the floundering Palestinian economy. We cannot be bought, we cannot be said that uh, uh, we need money. I wish we kept, we stayed poor and kept the land, then losing the land and losing our dignity by being occupied by Israel for 60 years. A few minutes later, he had to leave. The King of Jordan was waiting for him in Amman, and he couldn't be late. And our Middle East editor, Elliot Gotkin, joins us. Now, Elliot, what's the latest in terms of the peace talks? Well, a couple of things uh, have uh, emerged in the last couple of days. First of all, there's been a lot of talk about prisoner releases. Now, that was uh, seemed to be the main item on the agenda of those talks that uh, I uh, accompanied uh, Munib al-Masri on to Ramallah, but uh, uh, got told to stay in the car as he went in to have that meeting. Uh, the Palestinians won 103 uh, prisoners released. These are prisoners that were detained before the signing of the uh, Oslo Accords in 1993. Uh, uh, the latest report seemed to suggest that uh, there will be 82 prisoners released by Israel. Uh, the other issue seems to be a referendum on any peace deal if a peace deal is reached. Uh, that is something that uh, one of uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's key coalition partners, Naftali Bennett, has insisted must happen or he's threatening to vote against the budget, something that would bring down the Israeli government and uh, perhaps uh, lead to fresh elections or certainly a, 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 new, a, new, uh, a new government of some description or at least new components for it. So those are the things that people are talking about right now. Of course, ultimately, Mark, we still don't know for sure if these peace talks are going to resume next week, as U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry has said. Elliot, thanks. Speak to you later. Elliot Godkin there, our Middle East editor. Right, coming up, we're going to take a look at the relationship between easing in the U.S. and rallies in the S&P 500 when it comes to market health. Our next guest says bond buying is no substitute for profits. Markets is the world's leading magazine in finance, covering the people, firms, and deals that move markets, featuring the industry players you want to know more about, giving you an insider's view of the world's most private firms, providing in-depth analysis on the business deals that happen behind closed doors, and covering emerging industries with insight and context. If you want the unique access and perspective that can only be found in Bloomberg Markets magazine, subscribe today at BloombergMarkets.com. This is a Bloomberg TV Plus iPad app. Find out what's moving markets anytime, anywhere. A way to engage with Bloomberg and our team of reporters from around the world 24 hours a day. Create your own playlist or download videos and watch them offline. Plus, exclusive interviews and special features you won't see on TV. Download the Bloomberg TV Plus iPad app. Finally, business TV for your iPad. You never know where or when the next big story will unfold. Bloomberg Media Services cover the world with more than 2,200 news and multimedia professionals at 145 euros in 68 countries. Bloomberg. 
never missing a detail of the global picture. For today's company news, we're getting reports that Nokia is set to unveil a new smartphone for its Lumia line today. The device is said to be cheaper than some previous models at less than 250 euros and have a bigger screen. Nokia has been striving to take back market share from Apple and Samsung. The Verdi's SFR unit is in exclusive talks with rival Bouygues to share part of their French mobile phone networks to cut costs. The Paris-based competitors say they can reach a deal by the end of the year. A sharing agreement will be needed to be approved by Labour representatives, as well as competition and telecom regulators. And AstraZeneca is among the suitors said to be preparing bids for Onyx Pharmaceuticals. Onyx is the maker of lucrative cancer drugs. It turned down an unsolicited offer from Amgen. AstraZeneca has signed confidentiality agreements, hired advisors, and could make first-round bids this week. That's according to people familiar with the matter. Welcome back to Countdown. I'm Mark Barton. Time in London, 7.45. On the move starts in just under 15 minutes' time. Our markets editor, Manus Cranny's here with a preview. You're filling in Manus today for Francine. What have we got on the cards today? Um, well, you've got futures called higher, Mark, and I think what you could ask yourself here, you're going to spend a bit of time with Tim, but is it an indiscriminate rally, or is it a rally just based on every time we see a little bit of a chink in the U.S. data, we become more addicted to the concept uh, that quantitative easing will continue? <coughs> it just brings to mind the song by Robert Palmer, addicted to love, addicted to <laughs> QE, uh, or is it random, random stock picking, or can anybody win in this market? Um, telecoms. Uh, Caroline's going to dig a little bit deeper on the details through the show. KPN, um, you know, are they paying up uh, for the O2 brand of Telefonica in Germany? Vivendi divesting themselves. What's going on in, in telecoms? Why the rush? It's a major uh, deal-making uh, industry group so far this year. You mentioned pharmaceuticals there in your company news. I mean, this story with Onyx has more legs and tentacles uh, in terms of who might be interested. In Astellas was said to be there. Now it's Astra Pfizer. Novartis possibly back in the fray. They were there a couple of months ago. What is going on uh, with Onyx? Uh, these prizes in pharmaceutical. Roche, obviously, last week uh, going after uh, funding, possibly funding one of the smaller biotech bids there. Sam Fazelli uh, uh, from the Bloomberg Industry team will join me for that. But to put it all together, and uh, who better to do that than Tim Harris from Lloyd's Private Bank? Um, telecom deals, what's happening, what's happening in pharmaceuticals. So uh, I'll leave you with that thought, Mark. Great video, Robert Palmer, addicted it to It was that. one of the all-time greats. Manus, see you soon. Manus on the move in about 30 minutes' time. Now, a third of S&P 500 companies have reported earnings in the U.S. so far. Our next guest is looking at how much recent comments from the Fed have overshadowed company results when it comes to moves in the markets from J.P. Morgan Asset Management. We're joined by Global Markets strategist Dan Morris. Hi, Dan. Hello. Break it down for us. Paint me the picture of the U.S. earnings season so far. Well, I think the good news is companies are still beating estimates. So prices are running about 3%. That's good. That's about average. That's what we want to see. So even if expectations going into the quarter were low, they're doing a little bit better. So that's broadly positive. The market's reacted, again, broadly positively. The bit of the worry, though, is maybe it's reacted a little too positively, and that goes back to the comments from the Fed. I mean, if the reaction, if the comments we get out of Ben Bernanke about in, basically making uh, investors unconcerned about any tightening of monetary policy and stocks react because of that, as opposed to earnings.